hello everybody we are here with actor aaron jacobenko uh and he has a new film coming out called great white that's coming uh to u.s theaters and on demand july 16th oh and digital july 16th uh 2021 and let me give you the rundown it's a fun-filled flight to a remote atoll that turns into a nightmare for five passengers when their seaplane is destroyed in a freak accident. And they are trapped on a raft 100 miles from shore with, a man -eating, with man eating sharks lurking beneath the surface. Aaron, how are you today, sir? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you for, um, thank you for uh, stopping by um, this, this murky underwater set here um <laughs> you know what on that note i yeah. will say under the scenes that we shot underwater yeah. your visibility is worse than that you <laughs> because of, because of the chlorine yeah katrina and i were doing a scene where we were probably oh, i mean we were very close and you actually couldn't even see each other it was oh, really what like you just saw a blurry shadow and you got out and your eyes were just blood red shot and in pain so You've done well to sort of carry that through. It must be the method <laughs> acting. Yeah. Yeah. It's sorry to give you any onset flashbacks or anything like that, but yeah. uh, you know, well, I, let's let's get into it. I mean, like, how how did you how did you land this role in this uh, shark movie, and what made you say yes? Yeah, I mean, it was a uh, an audition process like anything else. I did, I think I did one round, and then. Um, I spoke to the director and he, he was great. He didn't, I didn't realize this until later, but he obviously saw something in my audition and really wanted me for it. So he color graded my audition and was sending that to the producers. So they sort of had this slightly more popping version of what I shot because maybe I'm terrible at um, filming things and only, only good at the other side. So he, he was sort of very supportive from day one, which was amazing. But Chatting to him, what I loved about the script and then really uh, elevated by him was uh, just the passion for character-driven pieces. He really wanted to focus on that. And I think as an actor, you know, the genre is so much fun. I love the horror genre. I love the shark genre. But I think for me, what's attractive as an actor is, is the human behavior, the human interaction with each other, with themselves and with the you know the survival of this sort of scenario that they're put in so yeah for me those were the things that really attracted me yeah the there's there's quite a bit going on i mean with your character alone um mm. you guys are you know let's talk a little bit about, about that i mean your character you and your girlfriend are running this excursion business and uh you know things go south from there so <laughs> I love that you call it an excursion business <laughs> in Australia's tourism excursion reminds me of like childhood and I just couldn't imagine just shipping off a bunch of kids but yeah look it, it, you know it, it was great I one thing that was really just a, a, a brought a lot of fun for me was the fact that he was a marine biologist I think mm. every every character that I play is sort of sometimes more curiosity than actually um you know anything that you think will amount to to bring more onto the screen it's more just this curiosity i fell in love with just the sort of research world that he would do and the fact that he loved the sharks and i love sharks but now it's been really heightened my love for them uh playing him and sort of learning more about these beautiful creatures so yeah it was a lot of fun um I don't know if that your question was sort of how the journey unfolds, was it? Or I just took it yeah, somewhere it was, else? No, it was it was just kind of like, you know, how how did honestly how that how did that all unfold in like, you know, trying to uh explain, you know, the, your character has a lot going on. Uh yeah. and I like that you mentioned that what was about his what his character was about actually makes it to the screen and plays into the storyline. Yeah, of, for sure. Yeah. And I also, yeah, so for me, the interesting sort of the, to get into that starting place of the journey, I think, you know, he's a character, he's a person who, you know, he's focused, he gets a bit of tunnel vision, maybe focuses on his sort of certain things and just forgets about everything else. Mm. You know, he's got a partner who's in need, he's got, you know, or just, just longing for connection. 
and you know he's struggling financially and he's just one of these guys who can just forget the world and just keep charging and it's and it's sort of a really attractive quality but we realize that that isn't going to um carry him through in sort of the relationship but also in this survival setting he really needs to find that sort of um that grounding quality that we just hope that he can and and for me that's a a nice piece of the journey for him yeah and he kind of has to be the guy you know the guy that (laughs) takes charge and you know hopes to save these people so you know yeah yeah I, i mean i think everyone has their sort of piece to play in that but it definitely he definitely has to, uh, these sort of scenarios, you're like, you, you have to step up. I mean, this, it's, it's got me thinking of, I won't go into it, but a, a real life story for me where I, I alive now, but I pulled a body that was limp out of the water after an accident and, mm. um, and yeah, wild, but it's sort of, it's got me thinking a lot about, yeah, just what you do. You just sort of, you don't really have any choice. I think for him, it was sort of, he had these skills, he had this sort of thing, and he didn't really have any choice. He just sort of had to do what was required. But as frightening and as challenging as that would be. Mm. Yeah, you kind of go on autopilot and do what you're Mm. supposed to do. Uh, Mm. Yeah, I've been Mm. in similar situations. Um, So uh, let's see, what what to you, what elevates this film? You, You touched on it a little bit, but what elevates this film above any other shark movie or creature feature or uh you know because in, obviously the immediate comparisons are jaws and deep blue sea and what what yeah. does this bring new to the table well i mean it was elevated i got really high in the plane uh no um i <laughs> <laughs> for me <laughs> terrible terrible no i i really love the you know and jaws definitely had the, the focus on, on the humans and i, I think it's it, I mean, it is really hard to have anything totally uh, original, but I, I did love that it was um, very character driven. You could remove the sharks and still, I believe, have a film. You could still have a survival film that is about human connection and sort of human behavior. And for me, that was what I, I thought was different. Yeah. Mm. Um, working with Martin, uh, I got, I got, to interview him that man is a character and he he's a hell of a lot of fun to talk to but what was he like yeah what was he like to work with and work with on set how how was that yeah you know it it was his first um feature his, his debut so he was he was one of the most prepared directors i've ever come across um even from from the audition stage we got sent or you know maybe just as i was sort of in, the, in uh, just casting me i got sent these just like i don't know how many pages of bio and of just character background for everyone he had wardrobe design he had everything just so in his mind well before we even got to set so that was great to work with um he had a laugh he had a nice balance of sort of you know enjoying it under the pressure of the time restraints that we had we shot all of this in five weeks and we lost a day because we had a problem with the plane. So, you know, he had a lot of fun, but he also, he was very character focused, but he also had a, a great, great knowledge of all of the legends that have done it in the past. Um, film Filmmaking, he's, he's a big Hitchcock fan. He's, you know, he's Jaws, Spielberg, early Spielberg. He loves it all and he, was, he just knows every detail. So it's sort of nice to have that sort of um, passion for cinema. You know, it reminds me a little of your, your Tarantino, you know, mm. you, just that passion for cinema being at the forefront, you know, driving it. Sort of it made us all, yeah, it was really fun to work with. Uh, did you, uh, during production or maybe even after the film shoot, uh, have you gotten to go diving and diving with sharks or get to know them as a species? And uh, what, what, have you, what did you learn in this whole process about Yeah, I mean, I, have, I, haven't, I haven't gone diving with sharks. Um, I mean, yeah, whew. but I, you know, one of my biggest takeaways outside of any performance, anything like that, one of my biggest takeaways was I didn't understand the importance of the shark, you know, of, of just that species um, 
or just Chucks in general, they, they have such an incredible, they play such an incredible part in keeping our sort of marine life, our sort of, you know, the ecosystem of our ocean or the Earth's ocean in, in order. They, they really have a big piece of play. If they're gone, if they were non-existent, the, the whole ocean would just be in a little bit of chaos. You know, the, the sort of the food chain is very important. Um, and I didn't recognise that. So it was, yeah, I think they don't get a, as much sort of love and respect that I think they deserve. And I definitely walked away respecting them so much more than I did going into it. Hmm. Um, do you have a, do you have a favorite shark or is it just going to be the great white or? <laughs> oh, I mean, I love the great white, but on a different note, I really love the sort of the, the seemingly peacefulness of a whale shark. You know, I love oh, this. Yeah, those just, are crazy. Those yeah, they're just insane. wild, wild. And they just seem to just, they're like the, they remind me of like the Zen monk of the ocean. They just go about <laughs> doing their thing, you know? <laughs> they're just like, hey, what's going on? So, what's um, going on? <laughs> yeah, right. were any of the, you mentioned some of the underwater scenes and being particularly blind because of being in a, a, a tank. Mm. Uh, what was shooting underwater like and how, uh, how did you kind of navigate that? Yeah, I mean, it was difficult. I was fortunate that I did a TV show, you know, a year earlier called Tidelands, which was very water driven. Um, and we had the, the director for the first two eps, Toa, he brought on a friend of his who, who was a stunt guy and actor that I know from New Zealand, who's also an expert in water. And he, we had this two week training program where it was, it was really just all about finding that sort of inner calm amongst the chaos of being underwater and not breathing, you know, mm. and, and having cameras thrown at you and this and this. So it was really nice to go into um, great white with that experience. And we then had some scuba guys come in and train us and, you know, it looks easy on screen, but Katrina and I had to, you know, share a thing mid, um, mid shot and sort of, you know, you just, you, you, while you're thinking about everything, you've got lines, you've got camera angles, you've got lighting underwater, you've got all of it. You, you also got to think about breathing out before you breathe in, you've got to expel it. Little things like that, that were really pivotal. But, um, you know, I really enjoyed it. Other than the eyes burning, it was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, but, but we did come across one problem. The plane, this is when we were above water. The oh. plane, which is supposed to sink, sunk before it was supposed to. And this, I'm talking like not even the same scene. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're all sitting in this plane. I got, you know, I, actually, I'm sitting on the edge. Um, Katrina, TK, uh, Kimmy and Tim are in the plane and it starts to just go. And then it almost turned into a real life survival thing where, you know, it's not that deep, the water, but... It was pretty chaotic. The the two in the in the plane were strapped in. We we had the safety crew right there, so it felt safe enough, and we felt sure. really um, cared for in that. But ignore that for a second. It was chaos. <laughs> <laughs> the plane was sinking, and it turned into this sort of survival moment. We're all diving off, helping each other off. It was it was wild <laughs> and a lot of fun. But we lost probably half a day because of it, because uh... we were supposed to be filming with the plane all day. Yeah. Well, you know, I guess that was a good omen because, um, you know, Bruce the shark yeah. sank. This is true. Yeah. So, yeah, I think so, so yeah. Yeah. So went right down to the bottom of uh, the sound that they were shooting in. So it was. You know, that's Brenda behind you. I don't know who named it, but I think they, um, our one got the name that? Brenda. So just a that's little. That's Brenda? Yeah. Oh. yeah I, th I think it was Brenda, something like that. Yeah. yeah. That's a little really romance cool. in the ocean there. It has to be a Bruce or a, or a Brenda. That's what it is. Yeah, it um, well, uh, my dog is called Elton. Sorry, my dog's name is Elton. So I'm all about the the human names for, <laughs> for creatures. <laughs> I used to have a pet rock named Fred. Um, so uh, so yeah. What what else do you have after this kicks off? What else do you have going on? You know, I. I did a, a horror audition the other day, so I got my fingers crossed for that. Um, I'm back in the audition process. A few exciting things at the moment that are probably too early to talk about. So we'll see. It's a yeah. We'll we'll see what arises next.
and you're LA based, right? So yeah. yeah. So everything is, I'm in LA as well. So everything is just kind of starting to open up and. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's an exciting sort of toe in toe out sort of time of, of, you know, I've, I've got a few friends and my partner working in London and, you know, the, every production is sort of, well, the three that I'm thinking of shut down at some point. So it's sort of finding that balance of restarting this industry, mm. you know, amongst everything that's going on. So hats off to everyone that's doing it. Yeah. It's, it's scary and fun and, you know, mm. it's just, it's good to see things coming back. Uh, well, um, listen, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to, uh, talk to us about great white. We're really looking forward uh, to seeing everybody's reaction here on it. And again, everybody, uh, Great White is available in theaters in the U.S. and on demand and digital July 16th, 2021. Aaron Jakubenko, who has a killer name. Thank you so much for, it's like, you did well. the yeah. more syllables, the better. That's amazing. Um, yeah, it took me most of my life to figure out how to say it. So you did well. Oh, well, I, I was, I, I studied a little, uh, a nice. little. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you again, Aaron, and best of luck on your release. Thanks. And thank you so much for having me. It was nice to chat. All right. Take care, dude.